Are you sick and tired of taking on a new workout or fitness program, but just to fail again? Have you lost trust in you saying yes to yourself again? Welcome to the Body Project Podcast. I'm your host, Katherine Tanaka, fitness, nutrition, and accountability coach, and the host and producer of this podcast, the Body Project Podcast. I typically interview amazing fitness and nutrition professionals on their origin story, on how they use fitness as the access point to alter their clients' entire lives. Today, we're going to talk about commitment and goals. I'm about to kick off a 12-week program. This is a program that I've run before, and I only run it three times a year. It typically is a six-week program. You've probably heard me speak about it before in the past, uh, and I, my clients get tremendous, tremendous success. Well, I've shifted it to be a 12-week program because where people fall short is being able to carry through with their amazing results after six weeks. So... We are now running it for 12 weeks to really support people to feel their best right now. So it is an intensive program that definitely requires a big commit commitment. And so on today's conversation, I wanted to speak a little bit about goals versus commitment and ask you about your commitments because I know that a lot of people have been asking themselves, how do I how do I want to feel coming out of COVID? How do I want to feel uh, moving through this time that people want to get back on track, especially if your kids are going back to school or especially if September is kind of like a January 1st to you, right? A lot of people are wanting to get back on track and feel good about their bodies. And a lot of people are just saying enough is enough. I'm sick and tired of feeling sick and tired. I just want to start feeling good again. I want to reset, recalibrate the way my my body is metabolizing food, the way that I'm moving, and just shift back to a mindset that is conducive to growth, to advancement, to feeling good, right? Um, and so I've had many conversations over the last couple of weeks of people wanting to get into the program, and people have massive goals for themselves, right? Um, but let's talk a little bit about those goals and what a goal versus commitment is. A while back in this podcast, we spoke about creating your fitness vision, right? And that creating your fitness vision is that goal for yourself that you want to lose five pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pounds, whatever it is, right? Getting clarity on your fitness vision, that big overall arching goal is very important, right? When you set a goal for yourself in your fitness and then create a vision around that, what does that mean? This becomes the outcome of which you can use your daily practices, those baby steps, those actions you put into place as that trajectory of where you want to get to, right? A reference point, almost like that North Star, that guiding light of what it looks like when we finally get to that finish line, right? A commitment, however, is that practice of having a daily plan almost like these mini goals day to day that get us to where we want to go, right? So on my online programs, my whether it's my six week or the 12 week one that's coming up, um, I always speak about baby steps, about these daily actions that accumulate into habits that get us to where we want to go, right? These are the simple commitments that you do today, that you can take on today that almost feel like they're so simple that it's fail proof. That's where I want to understand what what I want you to understand today, right? That commitment gives you the momentum to attain those goals. Over the last couple of weeks, like I said, I've had multiple conversations about people wanting to get into the program, that they've got these big visions, these big goals for themselves. But when it comes to having the conversation of what it's going to take, people defer out. Say, you know what, maybe I just can't commit to that right now. Yeah, I really, really want to lose that 40 pounds, but maybe it's just not the right time, right? So I want to ask you, what are you committed to? What is important for you in your life vision? Where do you want to feel like you are in January 2021? 
right? This 12 weeks basically takes us right to Christmas for this program. Uh, and it is, it takes something for people to show up for themselves, right? But I always pose this question and I wanted to have this conversation because many people are feeling really stuck and really wanna get out of this rut. But what does it mean to you to be committed to that, right? I mean, we already have almost a dozen people in the program, but what does it mean to commit to something bigger than yourself right now? Because if it isn't in fitness, it is in everything else in your life. I believe how you do anything is how you do everything. And so I ask you, what are you committed to? Because there is no question that 12 weeks is a marathon, not a sprint. And that's why I really transformed the six weeks into the 12 weeks, because yes, we can all buckle down for four, five, maybe six weeks, right? But when you add in eight, 10, 12 weeks, it is the long run, but it solidifies the results different than just doing a short program, because then it becomes a habit into a lifestyle, into a long-term success, into a long-term sustainable, consistent way of being, right? So it's hard to show up for yourself day in and day out of this practice of putting yourself first when maybe you've been so out of practice for putting yourself first. Uh, especially because I work with a lot of working busy moms, a lot of busy working women that are so used to putting kids first or partners first or work first or everything else like friends, like excuses, like life first, right? And so I get it. Oftentimes we lose trust in what we are capable, capable of. We lose trust in ourselves because we've said yes to ourselves before. <coughs> Excuse me. We've said yes to these commitments before and we failed, that we've derailed. And when you derail or when you have that glass of wine when you said you were not going to, or when you have that piece of cake when you said you are not eating desserts this week, you make it mean that you can't be trusted. That when you say you're going to do something, you can't stick to it. That when you make a promise to yourself, you can't do what you say you're going to do. And so oftentimes what I find with my clients, with women, we start not believing in ourselves. We start not trusting in our word. We lose integrity in our own words to ourselves. And so it is great to have a goal, to have a vision, but it is more powerful to find trust in yourself again, to commit to something bigger than yourself. Let me share a little story with you to maybe reframe it differently. I have an incredible client who hired me a while ago now. I call her Superwoman. She came to me to start training her two to three times a week when she started chemotherapy because she was diagnosed with cancer. Now, when you are diagnosed with cancer, this is a time that you can coil, you can sit at home, you have the excuse to live behind your excuses. But this Superwoman decided against that. She knows and she had this keen understanding that movement would bring her energy, would bring her strength, would bring her joy. It wasn't about the weight loss, it was about the commitment to her health, the commitment to showing up for herself, to showing up because she hired me so I can show up for her so she can show up for herself. Do you see how is this beautiful symbiotic relationship? And so she was going through chemo. And for any of you that know somebody who has dealt with cancer, know anybody who has done chemotherapy, know anybody that has been challenged with cancer, even if you yourself have, it takes something to get out of bed. Sometimes it takes something to get out of bed when you don't even have cancer, right? But this woman, <laughs> that's why I call her a superwoman, got out of bed on the days she felt nauseous, got out of bed on the day after chemo, got out of bed on the day she felt like crap because she had a bigger commitment to feeling good, a bigger commitment to her health, a bigger commitment to knowing that this is going to make a difference in her life, right? Despite the excuses of having cancer, despite being a mom, despite working, despite feeling like crap, right? Sometimes it could be like 
you know, oh, I, I didn't sleep well last night. People cancel their training sessions, right? People tap out for weeks on end because they had a girls weekend that they planned one way, but it went another way and they're ashamed, right? She showed up every single training session, right? We just kicked off a five day reset. And some of you listening or watching have joined us. So I'm so excited that you are joining us and welcome. Um, but a lot of people have chosen not to do that, right? I offered it free to all my clients um, because I think that September is like January 1st of resetting the way that we are in our habits. It's a great opportunity to say, okay, let's reset. And I really think that it's a beautiful opportunity to be playful with it, right? But sometimes we get activated by things outside ourselves. I know for me, that happens all the time. I don't like being told what to do, right? And this reset can be triggering for people. So I ask you, when it comes to taking something on like a reset, like a 12-week program, like your health, like your goals in fitness, in life, in health, in nutrition, what is, what is triggering you? Why are you getting activated? What are you making it mean? Because like I said before, oftentimes it is that trust that maybe you don't trust yourself. So you make all these excuses, you coil inside this bubble of excuses of being like, why are you telling me not to drink wine? Why are you telling me to drink this much water? Why are you telling me that let's try not to have dessert today, right? But if you take an approach of let's be playful, let's try, let's see if we can reset our habits. Look, I have drank so much wine in the last six months that I can't even, I'm embarrassed to tell you how many bottles of wine, cases of wine I've gone through alone, right? And I'm taking this on myself. I need to reset my alcohol consumption. No, I'm not an alcoholic. I don't think I have got an issue with that, but I want to have a glass of wine at five o'clock with my dinner and then have a glass of wine after dinner and maybe a glass of wine while I'm preparing dinner, right? But I'm taking this as an opportunity to just go cold turkey. Let's reset it, right? Let's find the glimmer of, oh, okay, I don't need wine to make get through my meal or my day, right? And so I believe if you take this playful approach with commitment and also commit to things that are it doesn't have to be wine. It can be as simple as, you know what? I'm going to line up 12 cups of water today and I'm going to drink all of them. And let's see how many can I get through. You may surprise yourself. I believe that commitment is a way to test yourself and to play with what is possible so that you can learn to trust yourself again right? Because if you consider this little reset, it's only a five-day reset. It is a perfect playground, an opportunity to say, let's try this baby step. This baby step, it almost is so ridiculously easy that I can succeed. When you start finding those successes in those baby steps, then you start practicing it, right? Those practices, those daily practices end up becoming a habit. Those habits end up becoming our systems that we live into that become these overarching lifestyle automations that create the results that we want. And so as we dive into these 12 weeks that start off next week, we are going to be getting into the psyche, into the mindset of our excuses, the mindset of our self-sabotaging conversations, our mindset of our negative self-talk, the mindset of how we limit ourselves and our beliefs because we live from our excuses and our sabotage. So I welcome you to try on your commitment today. Whenever you're listening to this, wherever you're watching this, take it on for yourself. Try on a micro commitment, a ridiculous one, so you can practice the trust that you can build back in yourself because you are completely capable of this, right? And remind yourself if you keep saying while you're listening or watching this that no, I can't do this. Other people can do this, but I can't. Remember that this is available to you. Every single moment is an opportunity to choose again. Right? And so even if you derailed on last week, 
and because you said you were going to start on Monday, or even if you derailed this weekend when you said I'm going to be good this weekend, you get to choose again. This is the playground, right? This is the playfulness that you get to say to choose again. So choose again. We start off next week for a 12 week program. I'm super excited. This is going to be three months of transformation, 90 days of going deep with these women, getting into fitness, transforming their bodies through movement. Then we're going to get into nutrition where we do every single week meal preps together, grocery lists together, a done for you meal plan so you know exactly what to eat. And then, like I said, we're going to dive into the mindset. But what I'm most excited about is that we are going to showcase these transformations that we've done over the last year with these amazing humans to do a fitness photo shoot. We're going to be shooting with the amazing Paul Busetta. Paul is the resident photographer of Strong Fitness Magazine. And he was the resident photographer for Oxygen Magazines for many, many years. And shoots for all the top magazines uh, globally, actually. Um, and he will be showcasing these women and all the hard work they will be doing. And it's not about looking like anybody else. This is about looking like yourself, being proud of your accomplishments, shining your brightest light into the world as who you are and who you have become and who you are becoming. I think it is a beautiful opportunity to celebrate. Right? If you've ever done a program with me before, if you've listened to this podcast before, I often talk about we are looking for those daily practices, those baby steps that accumulate to those habits and those micro successes that we also celebrate. Those many things every single day that you can celebrate to say, hey, I did it. That I can learn to trust myself again today. That I stood up for myself today. That I showed up for myself today through movement, through fueling, through mindset. Those are wins that far often we don't celebrate enough. And we are going to be celebrating in big ways. So make sure you join me next week as we continue the conversation that we started way back before COVID when we interviewed Dene Pierce. Dene is an incredible woman who lost over 50, 60 pounds and ended up on the cover of Andy Vero magazine and now shoots for Strong Fitness magazine. She has an inspirational story, but part of that series, we did a four part series with her, but we cut it short because of COVID. So we are going to continue on the conversation with the Paul Busetta. And I'm excited for you to hear the update and hear his experience with Danae, as well as what he offers women through photography uh, as the resident photographer for Strong Fitness Magazine. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please rate, review, and subscribe. If you are watching this, you can press subscribe button so you don't miss a podcast that we do, uh, the video podcast here. And if you are watching this, on listening to this on iTunes or iHeartRadio, please subscribe. It really allows me to have a pulse knowing that we are reaching you and making a difference for you. Have a wonderful day.